Well, morning everybody. Uh, as you can see, it's a lovely morning here in the northeast. Uh, one of the main jobs to do this morning, I suppose, is to try and get some rid of some these leaks out the out the lower greenhouse. Um, sun shining at last. It's been absolutely freezing here tonight. Um, I'm just going to turn that round and put it there. Put you on your perch here for the time being. It's been absolutely freezing here tonight. It's, uh, there's a heavy coat of frost outside. But the sun's getting up there now, and already the temperature's shooting up at just under 60 mark. So, hey ho, quite happy with that. Right, so what I've been doing this week, I've been uh, quite busy. I've managed to get up to the. Um, I managed to get up the allotment yesterday with help from my brother again. Um, I sat out here on the patio on uh, on Tuesday, uh, Monday, and it was absolutely beautiful. Gorgeous sunshine, so I, uh, I decided to start doing some potting off. So I had two or three um, trees of petunias out there crying out for being potted on, so I managed to put them on in the, the area with the lockment, which is uh, once again creating a little bit more room. These leaks are going out today, hopefully today or tomorrow. Um, these are show leaks, my own, my own strain, so these are going to go up the garden. Once again, they're going to create us a little bit more, create a bit, bit more space because. Um, once you get to the end of March and April, I'll get started potting on. Um, as I said on my Facebook page the other night, I was looking at the uh, the American tomatoes and I thought, well, high time they were potted up. So uh, there we are, we've, we've started. And uh, as the age old saying goes, um, like your granny used to say, you never put the bean in the door bed by yourself. And uh, the same rule applies to plants never over pot. I never put a plant in a bigger, too big a pot because I find that if you, it's a vast amount of compost, it's always colder, and if it's wet, it's a lot different temperature to what your little plant was used to when it's in a ceiling tray. So never over pot. Even though tomorrow's you, you, you'll hear people say tomorrow's love to be potted on, they do. Yeah, I agree with that. Um, you can put them on one week, and the next week you can go back and check the pot and it'll be full of root again. It's uh, it's the makeup in that plant. They just love to be potting on. But uh, as I say, just one step at a time. I often see lads on the internet putting plants uh, from one pot to a massive pot and that's um, to me that's a no no. So just take it up in nice little stages. So it's American tomatoes. Uh, I manage to put a dozen of them. I only need about eight or ten for myself and of course I always make sure I keep a cup for seed. So if you've, uh, if you've got seed from me and you've got your American tomatoes well get them in, get them sown now, end of March. Perfect. Even in a cold greenhouse just a rare, I just use a light plastic cover over mine and uh, they'll grow away quite happy under there. As I say, the temperature shot up here now at 60, so, so what I'm going to be doing is opening this vent up and getting a little bit of fresh air through it because, uh, as I say, I don't like it, uh, I don't like the temperatures too high in here. Yeah, it's lovely. A bit of fresh air. Well pleased with that. Um, yep, so that's that's how I'm started. Um, there's another one of my peppers. Exactly the same thing. Um, I never over pot them. And they're the first ones I set away, I think it was the uh, end of February. And uh, <coughs> I popped them in. So I've got about 10 red block peppers there to go. Oh, them tomatoes there, if you remember. I says I was going to set a few away, just a half a dozen, just as a trail run, and um, yeah, that's in there. Now, next week I'll probably pot them up the allotment, and I'll put them in a cold greenhouse, and we'll just, uh, <laughs> we'll see how they're managing that, and that's just, uh, that's just to prove to some of us that, um, you know, there's still stacks of time yet, it's, uh, it's only the end of March, um, once that's, I think I read the paper yesterday, we're going to get about 60 days of sunshine, yeah, well, I'll, I'll hold my breath on that one. I'm not going to uh, I'm not going to wait on that. But yeah, at the moment I'm uh, I'm well pleased. Yes, and there's me, there's me Russian giant. He's just tagging away, nice and slow. And all I do is just check the bombs every other day, just to see where the roots come to. And uh, that's a great day, a great way of telling you that your plants growing well. Once these pots full of root, you tend to move them on. But once again, you just go from the next pot up. Not too big. Not in any hurry, just let him let him go to his own his own speed. Never overfeed him and uh, never overpot him. That's my eye. 
Right, well today, as I say, I managed to get the lump in yesterday and uh, do a little bit of work up there, do a bit of potting on that but uh, the main thing is today was the brassicas um, Now I always wait until the end of March for me I'm never in any hurry for them, never it's, um, There's always stacks of time <coughs> People tend to put them in in heat well, I never saw mine in heat I know I'm in the greenhouse down home but these will be sown today they'll be putting a tray and they'll be taking up the lot no more along with the leaks and all these will go is in a cool greenhouse yeah, no heat whatsoever just up on the shelves the, the, the main thing I always try to insist on people is that they give their plants full light and there's no difference from these now we can open your catalogue up and there's a million an absolute million um, types of cabbage curry, sprout, broccoli and that all comes under here your, your, um, your brassica family. Well prepared soil, really deep, plenty of plenty of manure. I never um, never shy on the manure where the uh, where the brassicas are going. And of course, good but lime in the winter it always helps them. So I've got my sprouts. Uh, these are just a packet from Wilkinson's. Um, I do grow my own. Uh, I like to grow the sprouts. I like to use the um, the gladiator. I send away from every year. But um, if you don't like sending away for your seeds, you can just pop your local um, discount store, Wilco's, wherever, and pick up a packet, no problem. And they're just the ordinary Brussels sport, Eversham Special. They'll yeah, just go in, um, but no doubt once I get up the plot this weekend, I'll show my sprouts the kind that I like to grow. Um, you'll see in the difference in the in the seed packets. Um, on this one, it's uh, 300 seed. Now, in the packet I buy, you're probably be looking to get 25 or 30 and to me that's spot on that's all i need now they are they're a good cabbage here and once again look on the back they're great when you read the backs of them you know it gives you all the information you need once you've been gardening for a few years and you start uh, dabbling with your times and your uh, your methods and you get to what you like uh, cabbage is exactly the same hundreds of varieties big large small leafy and yeah uh, you you just you get the seed to, to suit yourself. If you're going to use a small family, use a small cabbage. You know, common sense. But um, that's where I like to go. Anyway, that one. It's a good. Um, it's a good variety. Thirty seed. So that's what I'm going to be sowing today. And uh, the method once again. Never change from method to sowing seed. Never. Um, just a small standard tree, a little tiny tree, and that's fine for thirty seeds. Uh, it's multi-purpose compost, good sharp sand, you know that, and uh, a little bit of um, a little bit of perlite mixed in just to get that bit extra uh, drainage. Now what I didn't mention um, was when I put the dam up, uh, when I put when I do my first potting of the peppers, tomatoes, and they go into exactly the same mixture. Um, I always like to wait until their pots are full with root, a decent sized plant and then they'll go from there probably into a 9 or 11 centimetre pot but they'll go into my pot and compost which is a pot and compost I make at, at the allotment which you know is um, 3 of compost, 2 of good soil and uh, 1 of sharp sand and uh, a little bit of manure mixed in with it but um, they are not good, it, it's far too rich to put young plants um, into a compost like that. So once again, after the, when the first cup, when the first potting comes on, they go into just a multi-purpose chop sand and a bit of perlite, and that just keeps them taking over. There's there's enough feed and there's enough nutrients in that multi-purpose compost to keep that young plant just taking over, just nicely until you're ready to start. As I say, if you use the compost I use, my homemade stuff, it's really rich, so you don't end up there burning the roots of your plants. Um, you want your plants just to grow nice and steady and that's a good idea so that packet there oh and they're lovely I like these varieties because uh, you get a what they do, they, they taint the seed with a uh, with a compound and this is blue and I think it's just to stop them from dampening off or from uh, giving them a little bit of protection but um, it's quite an easy job glasses on let's see and just uh, so the seed thinly, right over the top of the compost. Oh, that's lovely. Oh, I'm getting, getting a nice dirty seed over there. And they're just 
lying on the top of the compost, it's about a quarter of an inch to the bottom, half an inch to the level of the top of the tree. And all I'm going to do with that is just put a light covering. You can put about a quarter of an inch on the top there, no problem. You can put a light covering of up to half an inch of compost on the top of there without troubling them seeds at all. And what will happen with them? This is why I like to sow this time of the year is because I know I'm at the end of March um, being up here in the northeast we know we like to plant out around about the second week in May so that's given me six weeks so there and now as I say they'll come to a cold greenhouse and uh, they'll be coming through in a week's time no problem um, brassicas are they, they must be one of the easiest plants to grow up but if you, you know if you just take your time with them and grow them a decent way you'll get a nice crop from them. Um, as I say, they're so now, in a week's time they'll be popping through. Now that's the, to me that's a critical time. When they're up the allotment, you want them up to full light. You want them right up to the window because uh, cabbages are prone to stretching in the light. It's not a bad thing if they do stretch because um, I've got a way to combat that. Um, and when I start sowing, I either sow back into small pots or I use what I use plenty of is cups, just small cups. I'll fill that pot right at the top, dip a hole, put the cabbage in. If the cabbage has gone leggy, um, if it's about an inch, inch and a half, you only have to leave it for a day or two in the sunshine and they'll just they'll shoot away. That's why I like to keep an eye on my cabbages all the time, sprouts, collies, everything. Once they start break surface, I get them up on the full light and just watch them. Water from underneath again, and they'll just, just you should end up with a nice, strong little plant around about an inch high, no more than that. And then they'll go into your cups. Why well, I like the sown cups, people's got um, different ideas about sown brassicas. Uh, the old idea, idea was to sow them with a crowbar into the garden, nice rock hard, solid, solid soil, so they get a good root. Uh, that doesn't happen with me. My soil's turned over nice and soft. What I do do is to make sure that these roots, the, the pot is full of root. I mean, even to the point of being pot bound. And it not do the cabbage any harm at all. It's just a nice solid root. And that to me is the secret of growing a good cabbage or a good brassica. You get a good solid root there, a really good heavy root ball. When you come to plant that out, you'll not suffer any wind damage. Or you've got a good strong plant already well on its way to growing, which shouldn't um, get any, attacked by any birds. Well, it will be be attacked by birds as long as it's covered over but I think just getting a good solid root on it first planting it out it's a lot more it's not susceptible to so many diseases uh, flies that you'll get around the garden so as I say once they come up inch high put them in a good compost and that by the way will be, it'll be my compost it'll be my own compost up the garden that's the only time I'll sow the direct um, potting off into the potting mix that's my own compost because um, brassicas love they love being feeding, and you can't overfeed them, so just uh, make sure you, you get them ready, get them filled with compost, and what we'll do in about a fortnight's time, uh, once they're ready, I'll go up the garden and we'll, we'll, make, a, um, we'll make a video up there. But that's um, that's the brassicas, that's, uh, that's the cabbages sorted. All I've got to do now is to, uh, is to find a marker. I have got some somewhere. Um, These are the larger ones. I just like to keep these for the um, for the dahlias and the leeks and croissants. They're a bit big. Um, I should really get a uh, get the wife to pick us a few more up from um, from the shops. But uh, no doubt, I'll just write this one on, and uh, we'll get started soon. Okay. Right. So there we are. Off again. Um, marked. Cabbage cilion, that's one done. As I say, you're not stopping here. It's, uh, it's absolutely boiling here now. I'm going to have, to have this door open a little bit. Get some fresh air. It's now 70 in here, and that's just for that early morning sunshine. So I'm going to knock these temperatures right back down to, to where I like them, around about 55, 60 at the most. But uh, yep, there's the cabbages done. 
I will carry on with the sprout and um, and the calabrese. They are going now, uh, and there's three or four trays. I treat all my brassicas as exactly the same. Um, start them off end of March, get them ready for this at least the second week in May for planting out, and uh, by then we should be hopefully should be clear of frosts. Um, just one little thing before I go. Um, you know how I'm always banging on about um, clean trays. And uh, well, I must apologise on this time because if you, if you notice, there's me one of my trays of uh, Swan River Daisy. Now I'm, I'm just happened to glance at this the other day and look over. And uh, if you can see down the centre of the row, the tops have been nibbled away. First row is fine, second row is fine. If you look down the middle row, just a little bit shorter. And I thought whether I had been caught with a bit of frost or whether I had been caught with a bit of moisture and burnt. And uh, but uh, not taking any chances, I lifted it out the tree and uh, here ho, sitting on the bottom, a little slug. So it just goes to show you, even though you clean your trees, you wash them out, always check because the stuff you're bringing in, your compost, you just don't know what's on it, especially with maybe from the garden. You can bring a bag in. Which encourage something on just you just really got when you've got a bit of heat in the greenhouse you just got to really be sure that your uh, your plants are nice and clean your trees are nice and clean and uh, whatever else you're bringing in is clean. Now I've, I've slipped up somewhere because uh, one of the little, uh, one of the little buggers has managed to get in. He hasn't done too much damage, but he's uh, he has munched away. If I leave that middle row in, it, uh, hopefully it'll come pull itself back. Now these ones are ready for potting on, so I'm going to make a video at the end of the weekend. The, this weekend, sorry, and I'm going to start potting these on. Um, I did done the petunias yesterday. I get the swan river daisies, and what I do with these, I do them in little clumps, threes and fours, and they'll go into the multi-cell seed trays. Well, they're they're fantastic. They're just a nice size, but them to do. I've also got, as you see once again, three rows, and there's a the sweet William. These are the annual floral ones. Not the biennial, because a lot of sweet william, you can get the two different varieties. The biennial, he'll sow in the autumn for flowering the following spring. These are the summer flowering ones, and they're an absolutely beautiful, lovely scented flower. Three perfect rows there, and these will go in exactly the same time. Twos and threes, little groups. Um, I'm never mean when I start there uh, pricking out. I have nice little bunches in each, um, in each unit that I pump it down. So that's two trees there to be done. The geraniums, well, they've started slowing down a little bit, but um, no doubt I'm going to get stuck into them soon. And there's near that line of uh, Swan River Daisy. <coughs> now, what I will be doing, I'll be starting seed off, which I already have. I've started seed off in the allotment, um, marigolds, dahlias, a lot of the big stuff, a lot of the big seeds. Now, I use my own multi-purpose the made stuff up for them because uh, they're big seed and they're a big plant. Um, the only reason I don't use it down here is because these smaller seeds, um, I like to give them as much room as I can just to grow on. And when you start using your own compost, you get a lot of weed. So if you're just starting up, you've got to know your weed from your seed, which is a good saying. And uh, there I may say, down the side there, there's some grimsel just starting to grow on there. You can pick them out because you know um, you know what your seeds are like, and uh, any anything that looks different from them, pull them out. So that's another reason why I just use a multi-purpose compost, especially on the likes of these uh, lobelia, geraniums that they don't need any um, extra plants feeding on the new on the nutrients that, that they need. So just keep an eye on them, but they're fine. Yep, so we're well, well pleased. I've got a full tray of lobelia over the back there. I'm going to have to start on them. So I think what I'll do today and tomorrow is just get my trays sorted out. I've got a load of um, multi cell seed trays up the allotment, but they need cleaning. I need to bring them down. Be very careful with them, because as I say, if you bring them into the heat and you have got um, slugs or snails hiding in between your trays, and uh, they'll make a meal of your plants. So just there. Uh, just go careful, but for the time being, I'm going to uh, I'm going to plot on here. Um, I've got loads of tomatoes here to sort out. There's absolutely thousands of them coming through, 
but I'm not going to be in too much of a hurry to start potting up because the weather's going to be absolutely freezing this weekend, so I'm not going to take a chance on them. If you remember, I showed you them uh, a week ago, that's a Nimbus. I've got five free seed, um, and there they are, they're standing up lovely and proud. Now I'm just going to leave them in there. I'm not going to be in any hurry whatsoever to put them. The size of the pot they're in, they can grow on until our, uh, until our first um, two set of leaves come on before I put them up. But as I tell you, tomatoes are one of them plants. If you just be patient with them. You know, they love to be potted off, but um, don't pot them off in too big of a pot. Just go up in stages, nice and small. People will be saying, oh, well, you do two or three different pottings. That doesn't matter. Just go up a bit at a time, just take your time, and uh, you'll end up with a lovely strong plant, you know, all ready for planting out. So, as I say, yep, crack on your brassicas, get them in, get them sown like that. Um, not too deep, and you'll have a fantastic crop. I'll show you in a fortnight's time, I'll make another video when I start potting them up and we'll get them all ready for planting out in the springtime. For the time being, thanks for watching. Thanks for all the new subscribers. <coughs> some uh, some cracking names coming on there. I'm, uh, I'm pleased you're getting some information and you can uh, use some of it to your own good and on your own garden. So just keep enjoying your plots and uh, keep on posting, keep on sharing and uh, Keep on subscribing and I'll see you all again in the next video. Okay, thanks for now.